It was just a few days ago that we made the decision to move, uh, come together, our ministry from First Presbyterian Church to the Backdoor Playhouse. And I was struck that this text that we just shared was uh, chosen as a reading for today. Uh, we know um, we're reading from Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message, and he makes even more poetic use uh, for what was going on in the radical early church symbolism of being the garbage, the compost. I couldn't feel a more telling and obvious message about our fledgling little worship community. I take some solace that early Jesus followers got kicked around and were patched in threadbare clothes, got doors slammed in our faces, and were only able to eke out a living. Tonight, I'm going to get into some of the specifics about what Come Together was designed to be, what the criticisms were, and why we needed to move to remain, hopefully, a marvelous spirit of the living God. The scripture says, when they call us names, we say, God bless you. When they spread rumors about us, we put in a good word for them. So tonight, I'm not going to defend, but expand. Not complain, but explain. I'm not angry. And only hope this will be an opportunity for Come Together to find its fullest calling. I'm so grateful to my good brother David Kosey's contribution tonight, a fitting follow-up to the 10-10-10 celebration in Dogwood Park, for reminding us of how often the scripture takes us into the wilderness, of how often God is revealed to us in nature and in the natural. What a fitting scripture for how I am feeling. We are the Messiah's misfits, not yet a congregation gently entering the emergent church conversation, an itinerant ragamuffin band of Jesus followers, and just some of our friends looking on, just seeking and even just looking at the candlelight. We are the Messiah's misfits, a ministry in exile that didn't quite fit in our home church, but got welcomed by an atheist thespian and his Jewish house manager. So this, I say, is the parable of the atheist, the Jesus freak, and the Jew. Now, I would like to tell you a story about what happened when the atheist, the Jesus freak, and the Jew walked into a bar, except I don't drink anymore, and I thus don't frequent bars. To put it mildly, my personal conversion to Christ was cosmic and compelling. After years as a dedicated, psychedelic sinner. So I feel much kinship with the images I've seen on the internet of ragtag bands of 1970s Jesus people. And if you don't know who the Jesus people were, they were the hippies who converted to Christ. And there's YouTube videos you can watch of them convening on the Pacific Ocean, on the beach, for a mass baptism. And they went and convinced the hordes of the Haight-Ashbury district the addicts, that God's glory had a better injection of insight than the bags of goodies getting peddled by the speed freaks and the acid casualties. I feel drawn like a moth to flame to God's magnetic love and forgiveness. And in that, I might have forgotten for a moment that not every Jesus follower is a Jesus freak a reborn Christian, and I'm just so overjoyed and overwhelmed to get my Jesus freak on. So apparently, this grassroots, organic, all-natural, Jesus freak ministry was just a little too freaky for some of my friends at my church down the street. And that is why I come together suddenly finds itself worshiping a small community theater on a college campus. So, I took an inventory of all the comments that were made to me, and, and they were very specific. They weren't abstract in the least. And most of this message is going to address them in one fashion or another. So what exactly is the emergent church? And why did C2G 
through my research, immediately identify with it, or attempt to be what we were calling presbyemergent. And also, why was an attraction to the emergent church something that some of our friends strongly objected to? Well, frankly, it's entirely impossible to define the emergent church. But what attracted me to it was how utterly engaged with the real world and excited about cultural innovation these folks were. I would describe it this way. A fusion of liturgical flexibility with denominational fluidity played out in a theatrical way by fun-loving fools for Christ forever feasting at his table. Or, to put it another way, I noticed right away that these people had it going on with the Holy Spirit, and I wanted in on the Reformation and Revelation. It's said that the emergent church is post-everything. By that I mean post-modern, post-evangelical, post-conservative, post-liberal. It's post-everything except for posting on the internet, because just about every emergent church leader I've met has a blog. Mm -hmm. To be presbyemergent, we would have been rooted in the Presbyterian Church USA, which now may or may not for us be an option. We could choose later to incorporate as C2G and affiliate as a Presbyterian congregation, or we could choose to go the way of many emergent movement communities, and we would then become a non-authoritarian, non-institutional, grassroots body of 21st century gatherers revisiting the first century model. Mm 